So Epstein is done. And we all basically knew that something like this was going to happen, but I'm intentionally saying that he's done because Epstein, his case, all that, that's done. I don't know that he's dead. I haven't seen a body. I wasn't there. You know, he asked me, oh, well, prove to me Jeffrey Epstein's dead. I couldn't do it. My problem is that we're supposed to trust these people when they tell us, oh, this is what happened. You know, he committed suicide. He's dead now. This is the truth. These are the same people that we trusted to keep this guy alive. Is it possible that someone with the level of wealth and connections that he had could disappear, fake their own death, go live out the remaining, like, what, 20 years? Yeah. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Or alternatively, he could have been too dangerous to even be kept alive just because of what he knew about other people. But I want you to really pay attention to how the story is being covered in the media. I want you to really pay attention to how the story is being covered by people in the media with whom you usually agree or for whom you have respect because this needs to be a barometer for evaluating the integrity of those people people in the media that will pathologically dismiss any hint of suspicion behind what happened to Epstein, people that will shut down any questions about what happened to Epstein as conspiracy theories. You have to understand, at that point, those people are not concerned with truth, they're not concerned with justice, they're not even concerned with good. They're concerned about distancing themselves from what the explicitly corrupt media will condemn as baseless speculation so as to preserve their own brand. Let's think of the probability Epstein would be taken off suicide watch despite having previously attempted suicide or at least hurting himself six days prior, less than a week prior. Multiply that by the probability that the cameras were malfunctioning. You know, they didn't pick this up for whatever reason. Multiply that by the probability that he wasn't being monitored because, oh, well, people were working overtime. You know, people were unavailable to watch him. And we get the probability of all these events lining up, all these variables aligning, and it's extraordinarily low. One of the probably the most high level inmate in the country, and he's gone. The probability of this happening exceeds the threshold of coincidence. And regarding uh, the physical injuries that he sustained a couple weeks ago, I don't believe that was a hit put out against him. I think that he probably did that to himself. If it were a hit, I think they would have finished the job. And the people in the media that are churning out implications that President Trump was involved in this because of the social relationship that he shared with Epstein, which we covered before, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that those people are evil people. To consciously redirect the national attention for this story away from Epstein, away from our institutions, or even away from the other ties that Epstein had, for example, you know, the names released in the documents, to do all of that, to walk into work in the morning and spend your day doing that requires a level of darkness in one's heart that I can't even, I don't even want to comprehend. And frankly speaking, President Trump can barely run his White House. He's hated by almost every global elite. He's hated by the entire establishment that would theoretically be covering for him. Ignoring that he severed his ties with Epstein once he found out about how evil Epstein was, to suggest that he's responsible for Epstein's death is ridiculous. It's an absurd suggestion to make. And I will say the same thing about the Clintons. Obviously, the Clintons had a close relationship with Epstein. We talked about that in the video that we did about Epstein when he was first arrested. But we need to consider the possibility that this whole thing is much bigger than the Clintons. And we need to evaluate if we're blaming the Clintons because they're our political opponents. It's much more realistic to point out the improbability of this happening than it is to point that out and then immediately assign blame to the Clintons. And I know that's not what you guys want to hear. I've been on Twitter. Everyone's having an absolute blast tweeting about the hashtag Clinton body count. But here's the truth. You don't know it was the Clintons. And when you do that, you're just incentivizing the public to ignore you because at that point you're assigning specific blame based entirely on speculation. We need to get the public to first accept the possibility of this being an orchestrated effort by powerful people before we start deciding who those powerful people are. And believe me, I know about the Clintons. I've been preaching the Clinton-Epstein connection for like five years, almost five years. But that's not where the battle is being fought right now. You still have people that refuse to accept the possibility of this being orchestrated. You still have people that put their faith in the institutions. That's where we need to focus energy right now. Once we have that, then we can start to pinpoint exactly who may have orchestrated this. Because a lot of people don't want to accept that our institutions are corrupt. They don't want to accept that evil exists in the world. They don't want to acknowledge that because it scares them. And we've known that evil exists for forever. I mean, some refer to it as the devil or Satan. You can find equivalents to this in Christianity and Ju Judaism uh, and later Hindu texts, I believe, Islam. And the reason I bring this up is because with all the reading I've done, research experiences, whatever, I have never been presented with a greater understanding of the existence and presence of evil than when I read theology. When you realize that what you're fighting against is the existence of evil, everything just makes so much more sense. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to accept that because it's scary, just like accepting the reality that our institutions are corrupt or incompetent. Either way, we're robbed of justice. And I don't care that the FBI is investigating this. I cared last time when they arrested him, and now we're here. 
you know, show me results. Oh, it's definitely a suicide. We have yet to determine a cause of death from the autopsy, but one thing's for sure, definitely a suicide, whatever it is, and I don't claim to know what happened, but other people in the media who are stating with certainty that it was a suicide and that anyone who questions that is crazy, remember those people. Remember that they chose to preserve their brand instead of risking being labeled crazy. They're sycophants and they have no integrity. And so, you know, the case is dead. Sure, they can keep investigating with the information that they have, but the reality of the situation is that they needed Epstein and Epstein knew that and he offered to give people up for a reduced sentence. But that's over now. And so is this. You know, I doubt we'll ever have justice. I doubt his victims will ever have justice. And that's what this whole thing has done. As if we already couldn't trust our institutions enough, now this happens. This has sent a message to people, a message to, you know, perhaps by design. After that message is delivered, they'll move on. This will be swept under the rug. We've got the election coming up. Miley Cyrus and Liam What's-His-Face just split. Another mass shooting will inevitably take place. And just like that, it'll be forgotten. It'll be forgotten. This never even happened. And the people that we trusted allowed this to happen. They want you to forget. And so don't. Choose not to forget. Make a conscious decision not to forget. Excuse me. Choose not to forget that you have been failed. This cost me $30. I'm hanging that by my bed so that when I wake up, the first thing that I see uh, is a reminder that our institutions failed and that evil exists. And some of you might think that, well, why would you want to hang a, a, a pedophile in your room? Yeah, I bet that makes you uncomfortable. I bet it does. Look it in the face. Acknowledge that it exists. How can you fight evil if you won't even acknowledge that it exists? Don't let yourself forget.